Okay, uh, welcome back to CS325 algorithms. And today, we will be discussing this problem, longest path in a binary tree. So the problem is like you're given an arbitrary binary tree. For, for example, you have, okay, whatever, just an arbitrary binary tree. Okay, and the question is, how do you find the longest path that is embedded in this binary tree. In this particular input case, the longest path happens to be from this leaf node through the root all the way to the rightmost, or maybe this one or that one, uh, right, uh, leaf node. So that is the longest path. And the length of the longest path in this particular case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the number of edges uh, in this particular example. Now. How would you solve this problem? And the hint is to solve it recursively, recursively using divide and conquer, just like we did for most of the problems we've seen so far, like merge sort, quick sort, and number inversions. Recursively, and also in linear time, in O n time. n is the number of nodes in the tree. So that means you can only visit each node at most once. OK, so how would you approach this problem? Well, the first observation you can get is that it's obviously the case that the longest path would be from one leaf node to another leaf node. So the first observation, first observation is that it's definitely from one leaf node to another leaf node. OK, why? Because if it's not from a one leaf node to another leaf node. Let's say it's just from some node here uh, to some node here. We can tell, obviously, it's not the longest path, because you can always extend by going further down below uh, or get by going further down below to a leaf node. Leaf node, you cannot go further down below. So at least to be you know, extreme, you have to start from one leaf node and end at another leaf node. That's very easy, OK? But the second observation that a lot of students would have would be, does it have to go through the root? Always through the root of the tree. In this particular case, it is, the ca it is true that the longest path happens to go through the root, the, the, the root node. But is it always the case? Is it guaranteed that if I give you an arbitrary binary tree, the longest path that is embedded in that tree must go through the roof? How many of you would think that this is true? How many of you think this is not the case? I'll, I'll give you one minute maybe to, to think about it. Um, and, but the answer is, believe it or not, it's actually not true. This is not the case. Why? Can you give me a counterexample? Give, give me an example that you know you showed. You give me an arbitrary binary tree, and the longest path within that tree happens to be not through the root node. Root node. How would that be possible? You know, it looks like it's always possible. It, it's, it's always the case because you know you have a left subtree, a right subtree, whatever. And you say, oh, you know, go down this side to the deepest node, and go down on that side to the deep, deepest node, and then connect them with the root node, and that is the longest path within the whole within the whole tree. So it sounds like very intuitive that should be the case, but it's not always guaranteed. In which case, it is not. I, I'll give you one extreme example. So let's say you have a tree where the left-hand side is very little. But the right-hand side is very, very deep. OK? Um, and probably I need to move this up a little bit, uh, up a little bit. Yeah, OK. So sorry about that. So left-hand side, left subtree, very little. Right tree, very big and deep. In this case, if you would tra travel through the root, which happens to be this node, then your longest path will be like going through here, 
and maybe down here, and that is your claimed longest path. But I'm saying that you, I can find a better path, an even longer path, that does not go through the roof and be longer than you. How can that be possible? Well, because the right-hand side is so deep and big and fat that I can go this way. Some paths like this will be almost twice as long as the path that you pointed out to me, which goes through the root, right? And let, let me give you a more concrete example, if you don't believe me that way. Um, so let's say the left-hand side is just one node, and this is the root, and the right-hand side is you know, pretty big, fat, and deep. I can still go out pretty deep, um, something like that, right? And if you have to go through the root, you would pick, let's say, either this or that. But l let me just, uh, um, we can add another node, like say, here. Doesn't matter. Uh, the longest path will be that goes through the root will be something like this. And how long will that be? Well, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So five is your answer that goes through the root. But my answer that does not go through the root uh, will be like this. And I can use another color from this node. Here. And in this path that I just drew, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So my path that does not go through the root of the whole tree, but it's completely embedded on the right hand side, the right half, has a longer path than what you have, which goes through the root. Right? In the very extreme case, even more extreme case, I can imagine that you have a, a, a a tree which has only right hand side, doesn't have any left hand side at all, like empty left subtree. And then, of course, you have to do something like this instead of going just from the, the root to the deepest node on the right hand side, right? So you can, Im you can see clearly on this, the most extreme case, not going through the root is more advantageous, is, is preferred because you can have almost twice as long the, the path. So this claim is wrong. It does not always have to go through the root. It could be completely on the left hand side if the left side is very big and deep, the right hand side is almost empty, or completely embedded on the right hand side if it's if, if the left hand side is very small, the right hand side is very deep, right? And it doesn't even need to go through a particular uh, you know, the right child of the root or the left child of the root. You can imagine that um, in the you know, even more general case, you can have um, something like this and this and that and then there's a huge subtree here right and let, let, let's say they have a very little subtree here very little subtree here but the best path will be embedded somewhere here right longest path will be completely within the left child left subtree of the right sub right child of the root or something like that it could be anywhere right it doesn't need to go through any root or whatever child or grandchild of the root node, OK? So we understand that. Leave to reef always to go, always go through the root, not necessarily the case. Now, does that give you a lot of hints on how to solve it recursively here by divide and conquer? I hope that this is already enough hint that um, you, you would um, already have some idea in your mind how to, to proceed. Um, so there, there are two things that we, we did in this analysis. One is you know, the default way, if you have to go through the root, is going the deepest on the left side, going the deepest on the right hand side, and then concatenate them. Okay. So that's always a solution. That's the best solution that goes through the root. right? But that's not always the best solution. You could be completely on the left-hand side or completely on the right-hand side. So our third observation is that it's just the best path within the, this subtree, this, this whole tree, should be the maximum 
of three cases. The first case is always goes through the root. Uh, through root. By root, I mean the root of my current subtree, because I'm doing it recursively. The max, that means the longest path within this particular subtree, could either go through the root, which is basically this picture, goes through the root, that goes down deep, the deepest on left, deepest on right, and then goes through the root. Okay, That's the first picture. The second picture is only in left. That means left hand side is heavy, right hand side is like very little, and somewhere here is the best, only on the left. Or the last case is only in right. And that would be the symmetric version of this, which we already de demonstrated, like here. OK. So the third observation is that you can write a kind of a recursive program, or, or think about divide and conquer, that if you are facing one particular subtree, and you're asking the question, what's your best path, longest path, that is completely within your subtree? And we can be the best. The answer is the best over the three cases, through the root, left, only right. Okay. And let's say we can define a function like this for every single node, which means you would return the longest path that is completely within this particular subtree. And then you can do recursive calls, because only left and only right are the two recursive calls. You can think about as the conquer part in the divide and conquer, right? And then you can combine the solutions. So what we should do is to define, let's say define the longest for one particular tree. OK? And this would return the max of this, this, and that. And let's say we, we get it implemented. I will not show you how to implement it, because that's what you need to do for the homework. But let's say we can implement that little program recursively by calling longest of the left, longest of the right, and then take the max over blah, blah, blah. OK, so let's say you can return, say return the max of something, which is goes to the root. And then longest on the left, tree.left means the left child of the tree, and the longest of the right. If we could implement a recursive program like the recursive function like this, we could solve this whole question in a divide and conquer way, right? And once you call longest to the whole tree, to the to the root node of that tree, that means the whole tree, it will hopefully return me the longest, the, the, the length of the longest path, right? Is that clear for everybody? But however, how would you implement it like in, a, in Python, that is, uh, even in an even nicer way. So you notice that in this p the first case that goes through the root, you would basically need to go deep, the deepest on the left, and go deepest on the right. And then plus two edges, that is, plus the two connecting edges that connects with the root. So let's say. The left side will tell you, oh, the, the depth of me is, say, 4. The right hand side will say the depth of me is 5. And then it was, you would plus 1 and plus 1 for the two connecting edges from here to here, 1. And from here to here, 1. So it would be 4 plus 5 plus 1 
plus 1 will be the solution that goes through the root. So it looks like you know, the best way to solve this question is not necessarily just to return one, only one number, but you would rather want to return two numbers. Okay? That is, the first number will be the longest path, the length of the longest path. Right? Let's just like what we have here. But there is one more number that you want to return. That is the height of this subtree. Because your parent would need to use the height to kind of combine uh, the, the height of the left and the height of the right plus the two edges connecting to the root for the first scenario, for the case that goes to the root. Right? So in that case, it reminds us of something we have learned uh, in homework one, which is recursion with, recursion with a byproduct. So recursion, I'll write it here. We want to do recursion with byproduct. And you might remember that when we talked about number of inversions, it's done by recursion with a byproduct. Number of inversions, if you recall, is based on merge sort. But instead of just merge sort, along the side, we, we actually had a byproduct, which is returning also the number of inversions within this particular array. right? So for example, uh, you have uh, a merge sort case, you know, you have, for example, uh, let's just use a very simple example, 3, 1, 4, 2, and you divide by, you know, divide in half, and you, you, you solve this side, you try to solve 3, 1, and then try to solve 4, 2, uh, and after 3, 1 is recursively solved, it will become in order, it will become 1, 3, and after 4, 2 is solved, it will become 2, 4. But along the way, you also want to return a byproduct, which is the number of inversions that is complete that are complete within this little subarray and this little subarray. And in this case, the number of inversions within this array happens to be one because through one is an inverted pair. So I'll write uh, one down below. And in this case, it's also one because four two is also inverted. And then when you combine the two sub-solutions, and I need to um, when you combine the two sub-solutions, so here, so this is already sorted, and this is already sorted, but you need to combine two sorted lists to come up with uh, the sorted order of the whole thing, and you need to combine the the two number of inversions plus um, the number of crossing inversions uh, when you merge the two sorted lists, right? So that's kind of a review of what we did for homework one number of inversions. So for example, here uh, it should be one, two, uh, three, four in the sorted order. That's the combination. But the number of inversions. Can Number of crossing number of inversions will be one plus one because you always have this one plus one and plus the crossing inversions. How many crossing inversions do you have? Well, you have three two. This three two inversions is the crossing inversions. So, so that's why you have another one. And let, let's check if and this is three. And let's check if that is the case. So um, there's one inversion here for sure that's counted here, and there's one inversion here that's counted here in the sub recursion in the subprom, and there is uh, also the um, three two, that's the crossing inversions here. Okay, so one plus one plus one. This final one is the crossing inversion, which is only did only only computed when you merge two sorted lists using two pointers. Okay, so the final answer is the three. So it would always return two things, 
or in, in Python, you would rather return a pair of, you know, on one side you have the sorted array, and the second is a number, that is number of recursions, uh, sorry, number of inversions. So always re return two things, the sorted array, and let's say the number of inversions within you, right? So that is recursion with a byproduct. It can solve, it's a general mechanism, general technique that can solve a lot of interesting problems in a very elegant and simple way. And here we use this same technique to make sure we can write a very simple and elegant program for the longest pro problem. How? As I said, if you recall, we would want to return not only the longest path, nav, which is here, but also the height. Because you really need to report to your parent two things. Think about it, right? If your parent asks you, hey, you know, in the recursion, independent conquer, your parent says, please solve the question of longest within you. But I not only need the longest path within you, but I also need the height within you, right? And then I talk to your sibling, say, please return me the longest path, let's say it was here on the left and here on the right, and also I need you to tell me the height of you, right? So that when you finish the two recursions, when you report back, when both children report back their subsolutions, when each of them return two numbers, which is a pair, each, each subproblem again returns a pair of two numbers, the longest path and height, the longest path and height to the parent. And what the parent will do is to summarize, or to, in divide and conquer way, is the con combination, uh, divide and conquer and combination or combine uh, or completion, is that to combine the subsolutions so that I can form the solution of this subtree here. Let me use a different color of this subtree. And further report to my parent, because presumably it's not the, the final root. It has its own parent, which you need to report to. And again, we re report two numbers, the longest path and the height. Longest path may be some, 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 some path, and the height is the height. You always return two numbers. OK. Uh, oh, sorry, I couldn't, you, you guys couldn't see it here. I'll, um, I'll write somewhere else. Um, it's just, uh, you guys couldn't see it here. OK. Um, I will return two numbers. One is the longest path, and the second is the height within me, right? And how would you combine the two subsolutions? Well, the height is easier. It's just the max of this height or that height plus one, because you always have one more level for the root. For the height, it's easier. Right, max of this and that plus one. For the longest path, it's just the max of three cases, right? So you get two numbers. So everything returns two numbers. This guy also returns two numbers, right? Everybody returns two numbers, and then you combine the two numbers to form another two numbers to report to your parent, right? That is how we do recursion with a byproduct, okay? So to, just to recap, we did it using divide and conquer and combine, right? So divide, and hopefully you can see it, sorry. Divide, conquer, and combine or complete. Just as we did divide and conquer and combine for the quick sort and for, for the merge sort and for the number inversions, but here is the recursion with a byproduct, which means your conquer part, the recursive calls to the subroutines to your, your children will re return not just one task, but answers to two tasks. 
and there's one main task and there's one auxiliary task. Always like that, right? So here is also two tasks. One is sorting, the other is number of inversions within me. And here it's number of, uh, it's the, the longest path and the height. The height, you could imagine it's a auxiliary task, but you do need this auxiliary task, task to be reported upwards and all the way to, to the root because uh, up, up, you know, your, your parent will need the, your height and so on and so forth. So this way is a lot simpler and more efficient than you're writing two different uh, functions, one for the, the, the max and then you're calling the height. That, that will be too, too bad and too, you know, too slow uh, for this problem. Right, so I hope this is clear, and let's analyze the complexity, the time complexity of this problem. Why I can claim that it is O n time? It's obviously O n time. Why? Because this recursion is just like a you know a tree traversal. For every node, I visit once and only once, right? Because you know. I visit with this node, I, I just give the problem to the divide, and I call two sub-recursions. And then I, when it's reported back, I do some calculation, which is in all one time, because these kind of calculations in the max is all, all one time, and I report it back. So there's all one time of processing at each node, at each node. And this is similar to when we analyze quicksort. The number of processing, the number of tasks, the amount of tasks, at each node in quick sort will be O n, or in merge sort will also be O n. But in this case, the amount of work at each node is O 1. Why? Because it's just a max of these three cases for the longest path, and for the height, it's max between the two. It's also O 1. So there's O 1 processing on each node. And there are only n nodes. You only visit each node once and only once. Uh, so there's basically O n throughout uh, in, in, in the, the whole problem, right? So O n at each node, O n amount of work, or constant amount of work at each node, and O n in the global case in, in the whole, for the whole problem, right? So is that hopefully, you know, hopefully that's clear uh, for everybody. But, uh, but let me summarize it quickly. So we are talking about, we're solving the longest path problem in the binary tree in this arbitrary binary tree. And we have two observations. One is it has to be from one root to another, sorry, one leaf to another leaf, because otherwise you're not going deep enough. You have to go deepest on left side, left side, and deepest on right side. So it has to go from one leaf to another leaf. OK, that's easy. But the second intuition is not correct. It's not always going through the root. OK, but that second analysis gives us some hint of how to solve it with recursion, uh, or in, in other words, divide and conquer and combine, divide, conquer, and combine. It, in the sense that you either, if you either go to the root, or completely on the left, or completely on the right. And you have to, if you have to go through the root, by the first observation, you have to go the deepest, that is the height of the left tree, and also go deepest, that is the height of the right tree, and then you plus two. That's the first case, that is, the path, the longest path, that goes through the root. That's the first case here. The second case is you don't go through the root, and you only use the left tree. That is, you only use the longest path that is completely embedded in the left subtree to be the solution of the whole longest path of the whole subtree. The, oh, sorry, of the whole tree that involves both root and left and right. Or you only use the right subtree, right half, uh, for the whole end, for the, for the answer of the whole tree. OK, so that means if you write a recursive program like longest, which is not the final version you would write it, because the final version would return two things using recursion with a byproduct, you would return a max of two, three things right, for, for the maximum, uh, for the longest path. But because we want to solve it elegantly with recursion with a byproduct using a way very similar to homework one's uh, number inversions, we want to return two things, two numbers. One is the number, of, uh, the, the longest path. The second is the height. So every subtree, in other words, every node would return two numbers to the parent, two numbers to the parent. And when the parent node receives 
two numbers on the left and two numbers on the right, it does some combination work, like the max and over three or the max over two, whatever, and then forms its own two numbers and report percolate up, uh, report further up to its own parent, and so on and so forth. And when the final root node, the global root node, receives the solutions of you know, the left, the solutions of the right, both have two numbers, and finally you got two numbers. And in that case, you return two numbers, but you only take one of them. That is on the main problem, that is the longest path. The auxiliary solution, that's the height, we no longer care for the final, very, very global root node. right? So that is the whole idea of this problem. Of course, you have to write the program like this yourself and, and to write it in a very elegant way. It's probably just like five or six lines of Python code. You can do it very, very, in a very, very short program. And that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of divide and conquer and recursion with byproduct. And finally, we analyzed the, the complexity and it's O n time because there's only constant number of work, constant amount of work per node, and there are only n nodes. And you only visit each node once and only once. So hopefully by now, uh, you, you understand everything. And if you have questions, you can ask me. Thank you. Thank you.